Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ryan and I'm a writer. And today I'm gonna teach you how to make a storyboard, at least the way I do storyboards. This is a storyboard. Actually, this is a storyboard of a short film that I just uh, produced last week, I, I directed last week. And the reason I'm working with storyboards nowadays is because time is money. That old saying that, yeah, time is money, it is true. Especially when it comes to film. You can wing it. Many people out there, they go by shot list and they just kind of get a napkin and then find a, a, a Crayola thing and then just write it on and, and, and they can wing it like that. And some others they just say like, well, I don't need that. I have a group of friends that I bring with me all the time. And what I do is I get their ideas and all is fine. If that's your way, that is your way. But chances are that if you're watching this video is because you want to improve your craft. Yeah, you can throw everything on a gimbal or in Steadicam and go out there, but then your music video or your film or your cinematic B-roll, whatever you want to name it, whatever you want to call it, the epic B-roll video is going to look exactly the same as everyone else's out there. So if you want to stand out a little bit with your work, the job of a director or a filmmaker happens way before you start recording with your camera. A friend of mine, a, a great director that I worked with in the past told me that, and it makes complete sense. Why? Because you do all the heavy lifting in pre-production. You have all the time in the world to make sure your shots align, the blocking is correct, the camera placement is correct. You do everything you need to do. You control absolutely everything in your scene. Why? Because you're directing it. It is your film. It is your work that you're showing out there. That's why you do storyboards. That's why you go through the trouble of making this happen. There are many ways to make storyboards. You can pay someone and I hope you're actually paying someone. You can have someone that draws to do it for free. You can do stick figures. You can take pictures. You can use your phone and just place everything on a piece of software and make it look like a storyboard. It just gives you a roadmap, a mental map. You can go to Studio Binder, for example. It's a great platform. You can do screenwriting there. You can do shot listing there. You can share with your crew or you can just simply create a storyboard in there. It's not a sponsor video, at least not yet. But if you want to sponsor me, hey, hit me up. Or another way you can do it is like the way I do it. I come from advertising and I know that time is money. I know that a day of production, it's thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. And well, if I'm going to wing it, I'm going to expect my director to just go there and wing it and shoot whatever. And then in, in, in post trying to figure out what's the best shot. Well, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that went directly to the trash can. That's why we do storyboards. So if you want to learn how to do it, I'm going to show you the way I do it and why I do it, which is I do everything in Photoshop. Why? Because you can just take two pictures, blend the pictures and make a composition for you that works. In this storyboard, for example, there are like 23 different scenes. I storyboarded everything. It's a scene of a comedy and I make sure that I knew every single shot. So by the time that I was shooting everything or I was directing everything, I knew what needed to happen and when it needed to happen. It also allowed me to shoot not in sequence. I'd split everything in a shooting schedule two different days and I just had to walk my actors or my actress in this case and tell her what was expected for the scene, what was the motivation inside of that scene and then make everything go super fast. If I would have not have a storyboard in my case, it would have been a pain in the butt. Imagine shooting a, a, a five minute story straight, repeating every single take. There are 22 different angles, repeating every single thing from beginning to end 22 different ways and then trying to match that. That should be a nightmare. That's why you want to do storyboard. So if you're watching this video and want to learn my way of making storyboards, let's jump into Photoshop. The first thing you need to do is open the software. What I tend to do is I tend to go to the film tab and find something that is like um, 1920 by 1080. Why? Because most films are shot at that resolution. You can pick whatever you need. If you're doing an Instagram post, well, select something square. If you're looking for something for, I don't know, TikTok, well, find something vertical. Well, you figure out whatever works for you. Let's open up Photoshop. The first thing you need to do is you need to select your pictures. Google search, I'm not gonna do that for you. Go ahead. Find the picture you need. In my case, I need a picture of a girl that she's looking inside of her purse. Why? Because that's the comedy that I'm shooting. So I need someone that is struggling to look for things inside of the purse. So I'm going to combine three shots that I need to do in here. So I have three pictures. One, two, and three. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create layers to retrace everything. Let's work with the first picture. Let me turn the second two pictures off. First thing is I create a layer and on that layer, I'm going to select the pen tool. In this case, I'm going to use the B 
or key the key B to select the, the pen tool. And then what I'll do is I start zooming in. This is not a Photoshop tutorial by any means. Uh, this is the way I do it, the way it works for me. I created a layer and then I'm gonna start retracing things. Why do I do this? I don't know, I like it. So this is part of the, the feeling. Uh, one thing, using a pen helps a lot. And then I just retrace some things, the ear, a little bit of the hair. Uh, and there are some things of the hair. For example, I don't like her to have a ponytail. Why? So I don't know, I'm gonna make a little bun or something like that. Um, also, I don't want it to have a scarf, so I can override the scarf. Let me just go with the lips. And let me complete the dress. She has something like this. And then we check, you know, every so often. And let me copy here. Um, hand, a little bit. Let me retrace the fingers. If you need to go back, just press uh, Command Z for Apple. I'm assuming it's Control Z if you're uh, using a PC. I don't know how to do that. I do not own a PC. We talk about this, guys. Okay, so I have basically rough shape of a girl. It looks pretty, it looks what I need. I might need to complete some things. For example, a little bit of the neck because she has a neck, I guess. And a little bit of the shoulder. I'm gonna add some shadows, so I'll create a new layer. And the shadows have a little bit of a motion to it. I'm gonna bring that layer down, probably go 50%. That works for me. That is great. Uh, and now I'm gonna retrace the purse. Why? Because I need her to look in a purse. So you can label the layers or not. I tend not to do that. Just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna do purse. And then in that purse, it's a new layer. So I'm gonna start retracing. You zoom in to zoom in, command plus space bar to zoom out, uh, option, option, command, space bar. Basic Photoshopping thing. So I start retracing this. Why? Because I can, I guess. I was watching a video the other day and I read that Martin Scorsese, he storyboards absolutely everything. He does entire films like this. He feels good for him. Maybe I should try it, right? I know there's many of us out there in YouTube saying that the only thing we need to do is um, just go out there and start shooting things and magic happens. But sometimes it's not the case. Let me, wow, look at that. She has a purse now. We have a second picture. Uh, the exact same thing happens. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna create on top of the picture. I'm gonna create a new layer. And this layer, I try to separate things as if it was a painting. Uh, background, foreground, and middle ground type of thing. So I'm gonna paint the purse first because it's the first thing I see. Doesn't need to be precise, you just need to have some sort of action happening in there. Uh, also, you can be as detailed as you want or not. I'm just trying to get across the idea of, well, it's a purse and we're gonna have a, a close-up of her looking into the purse. So here is another shot that I'm planning on doing. Everything is part of the same uh, shot for me. So I'm gonna create a new layer and that layer is gonna have, I don't know, let's start with her hair. It doesn't need to be perfect again, guys. It's just super simple. This is just a way of doing it. We're just retracing. I guess when you study advertising, they teach you that retracing is a great tool when you take uh, design classes, if you have access to Photoshop. So wait, why not? and then you just turn on the, sh the layers that you need. This is the second portion of the girl, and this is the third girl. So right there, I have three different pictures, three different angles that I need to shoot everything. I know that I need a, a medium shot, then I need a couple of close-ups, and then finally, I'm gonna try to do some sort of a cowboy or medium wide shot. You can be more precise if you want. Uh, you can add uh, the shot numbers, A, B, C, whatever you want, create a new layer, uh, change the color and then we're going to have shot a shot b and shot c then you can add things if you have a pen like me i do have one of these fancy tablets you can have a this is a medium shot this is going to be a and this is going to be a cow cowboy or cowgirl shot or medium wide shot that's it simple i hope this was helpful if you guys want to see content like this hit like and subscribe I hope you guys can use this for your own films. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.